If you're interested in the game Stunt Island, I have exciting news for you. This is the new Stunt Island archive. All of the game add-ons, films, and content I've been able to find now in one place, and it comes in a single, well-organized zip file. The archive contains 3,694 total files. Here's how it breaks down. Over 800 custom objects for the game, 676 film-related files, then we have website archives, the object editor, some additional tools, and an assortment of documents, images, and miscellaneous files. There are 320 films created with the game, the single largest collection of Stunt Island films ever. You can view and use most of the archive on any platform. You don't need the Stunt Island game files themselves for most of the archive features. It is really useful to have DOSBox installed to view films. Let me show you a quick overview of installing DOSBox. I'm going to use DOSBox X, which has a nice interface. Pretty much just download and accept all the defaults. Okay, we're ready. To get started, download the archive. You can find the direct link in the description, and it's also available on the Stunt Island Central YouTube channel page. But if you search for Stunt Island Central and bring it up, here it is. So I'll have the link on my main page here. And let's go to more details, and this just shows a little bit of information about it. And it has the download link right here. So I'm going to click on this and go ahead and get the download. It's just under 300 megabytes. You can open this up with any zip utility. All right, so here are all the files within the archive. And what I'm going to do is just da drop this into my Stunt Island directory. I'll create a new uh, directory here called archive and put everything in here. And let's take a look. So to start with, the readme file, which is right here, contains all kinds of information. So I would recommend that you start here. It shows a general directory structure and it gives details about what all the files are in all the different directories and it shows who the contributors were. So I recommend taking a look at that. But let's get started from the top. In developer tools, these are things like um, code and stuff for developing, but even if you're not a developer and don't care about that, there's some cool stuff in here. So let's take a look. In Free Flight, this is called Stunt Island Free Flight, and it was created um, back a while ago, and it works in Windows. You run this play.exe, and it's kind of cool. It uses a WASD on the keyboard to move around, and you can actually view the island in relative high resolution. I believe it's an 800 by 600 window. And uh, it, it's kind of cool to see the island in higher resolution than it was originally. And this shows that it is possible to extract all the game data and to view it in, in 3D. And that comes with some uh, source code as well. So, uh, you know, if you're into programming or development at all, you can find stuff here. Uh, this um, this page has inf this file has information about the film format, and so you know if you want to work on the Holy Grail, which would be showing all of our films in high resolution, this might be a good place to start. So, all kinds of developer tools here. That's Free Flight. Um, let me just highlight one other thing here. This SOD parse. What this does is this takes the uh, the resource files, the res files in Stunt Island the rip res utility here and it extracts all of the objects from it and so um, this has a few files that have been extracted so you have these object files and 3d studio files and i'll just bring it up into a free online 3d viewer you can bring it into blender or anything like that and this is alcatraz we'll just take the um, 3d studio file and here you go. So here's the original game object viewed in another utility. And you can do something in Blender or really any utility that you want. You can see the colors come through. So it's pretty cool. You can use the extraction tools here to get objects from the game. Uh, some things like planes may not come through correctly just because they use sub objects and stuff like that. But um, again, it's, it's pretty cool. And there's code fragments here as well. So that's the developer files, and you can there's a um, readme file here as well with a little more information. You can do all kinds of cool stuff there. Now let's go into docs. So Disney support contains just some general text files 
from Disney. Interviews has some text files of different interviews, mostly with the game developers. And Manual contains the Stunt Island Manual in PDF format. And uh, you can find all kinds of information there. If we go into Reviews and Ads, this is kind of some cool stuff. A few ads from back in the day uh, promoting the program. And then I've collected quite a few reviews from different magazines and I've extracted just the pages with Stunt Island on them. So here we have a review. Here's Computer Gaming World, the review and screenshots, electronic games, um, PC Gamer Top 50 Games of All Time, Stunt Island is on there, and PC Zone has a lot of information. So this is kind of some cool historic uh, reviews of Stunt Island. And there's a few other ones on there as well. All right, this is CIFA email. So this is from the Stunt Island Filmmakers Association. This is a mailbox file you can open up. At this time, I only have 2003 to 2007. I have a few older archives I have to make available. But here's a mailbox file. If you have Windows, it has a basic mailbox viewer here that you can use. So let me just start this up. It has over 300 emails from 2003 to until the um, CIFA really stopped in 2007. So you can find some cool stuff there like um, here's where we discussed the game The Movies. Here's where I was selling my original Stunt Island and Strategy Guide, UFO Command Act 2, and so on. So um, all kinds of great, uh, great historic emails here you can find. So um, take a look at that and enjoy that. And finally, TIPS just has a few uh, document files. And this is something from, um, from Mick Healy's website, Stunt Island Harbor. How big is a Stunt Island world? Just kind of a cool PDF there. So, okay, so that is the uh, documents. And uh, oh yeah, if you want to go into CIFA profiles and look at this, uh, if you want to look for, back from, two, from 1997, if you were part of CIFA, it's kind of fun to find your name here and see what you said about yourself. So that's, that's something that's worth a look. All right, moving right on to films, possibly the most important part of this archive. Now, the first thing I would recommend is go into this Excel file, and you can open it up in Excel or something like Google Sheets. And let me just bring this up. What this does is this shows you a complete list of all the films in the archive, and it gives details about them, like what the file name is, what my quick rating is, the director of the year, the length, a brief description, and the location, as, as well as a few other things. And so this is pretty cool because what you can do with it, and let me just show you using Google Sheets, is you can use a filter on it and find different films just uh, different ways. So let me bring up the filter. You can sort these by uh, rating, for example, and find the top rated films, at least by me. You can sort them by year to find the oldest films or the newest films. You can find the shortest films. And you can do things like, uh, let's uh, select films that have new sound so we'll set this to only films with new sound and we can sort them by rating from lowest to highest and once you find a film that you are interested in what you need to do is um, find the film and go over here to the right side and it's, this shows the location and this will be the location, which is based on the type of film that it is. So if you've used Stunt Island before, you know that there are different types of ways you can play films. And that's the way that this film uh, archive is organized. So film only, these are films that you, can, you have to run in Stunt Island, just in the Stunt Island theater. So you do have to have the game to view these. Film with user sound is kind of like that, but it has a separate user sound file that you have to stick in the correct location. Um, new Play One is using the Play One utility. You don't have to have the original game to view these. And Old Play One is similar, it's just a different, uh, different Play One program. And Multifilm is a, a sort of a variation on the New Play One. 
these have multiple films, for example, the Truck Wars series, and I have them set up uh, with a batch file so you can just run the batch file and view the entire film. And finally, README has different README text files for various films. So uh, let's just take a quick look and I'll show you how to use these. So I do have Docsbox installed now. And what I need to do is mount a C drive in my directory, C colon backslash stunt aisle, switch to C drive. And let's go to the archive directory. And I can go now to films. And let's say, let's go to old play. And the name of the executable file is play one. So all I have to do is run play one. And let me quick set up a DOS box and show you how I like to do stuff. Uh, make sure it's a four to three aspect ratio. Uh, this makes sure that it has the original aspect ratio. And then I like to set my scaler to, um, yeah, probably normal 2x. And then I can do the uh, force scaler to do a larger screen. So, okay. Um, I wanna go to capture mouse. And within, once you run play one, all you have to do is select the film that you want. And these are all set up so that these are the correct films that will work here. And so we can do something like, um, let's run this Pearl Harbor film. And I can run it, um, let's see, not too bad. I'm gonna do a control F10 real quick on my CPU. And we will do emulate CPU speed opinion 100. Okay, and you can see that the film comes through with sound and everything else. So this is how you can view the films. And if I go to load, I can load a different film here. Um, there's all kinds of films represented and they should all work here. So um, yeah, it's pretty cool stuff. So that's the old play one. New play one works the same way, just that these films are designed to work with a patch version of the Stunt Island Play One. And so, yeah, you can load films up here and play them and it works great. Okay, so those are the Play Ones. Let's go to the multi-film. These are some of, uh, some of the most known films and some of the best films in Stunt Island. And all you have to do here is run the batch file for whatever one you want, you know, flag day. ID5 is the day after Independence Day. So all I have to do is um, just run the batch file and this will play the, um, the first part of, of the film and it will uh, go on to the next part. If I just hit fast forward, uh, go to the end of the film, you can see it automatically starts uh, the part two. So you can do that and you can run all these films using that. Okay. And the, the other one that we want to look at is the film only. So I have Stunt Island installed here in my root directory, my emulated root directory. So we'll just go into Stunt Island, go into post-production and theater. And now I can just go to, go back up one, go to archive, which is where I put the, uh, the archive. Let's go to film only. And it shows all these films that uh, that I can run and uh, view directly in the game. So that's just a quick overview about how you can view all the films in the archive. It's pretty cool, over 300 films. By the way, I'm always looking for more. So if somebody happens to have some of the old films that are not on here, I would love to have those and I'll put them into a future archive. So, um, all right, let's go ahead and get out of Stunt Island. Okay, and let's continue on looking at the archive. So that is films. By the way, here's films by year. If I bring this up, just a kind of cool graph. This shows the CIFA resurgence of films starting in 96, 97. And uh, yeah, lots of films here. Of course, there were quite a few when the game was first released. And also make sure you take a look at this little text file about playing films. It just uh, shows a lot of details that I told and some other details as well. All right, moving on to images. So we have several different uh, 
covers that have been scanned, just different uh, box covers, manuals, and so on, which is kind of cool. Um, these are just some prop images that Dean Newberry created. These are just the images, not the props themselves. Okay, icons. These were some of the icons that came with the original version of the game when it came with a Windows, uh, probably a Windows 3.1 launcher. All right, uh, keyboard. Mick Healy created these, and it's kind of cool, just a little keyboard map, and I created a, a larger versions of these. Those are the 2X versions. Okay, maps. This is a scanned version of the map that came with the game. Miscellaneous, just some miscellaneous stuff. This is kind of a cool um, directory. So what we have here is, uh, these are from David Arnspiger, and this is the original concept for the cover art for the game, and some of the original, um, how the original set designer looked, which is pretty cool, and the original theater. And this is, this is a scan from a magazine, uh, which shows how the original film editor looked. So, yeah, pretty cool stuff here. Stunt Island 2, this is just for fun. Um, these are some images created with, um, with uh, artificial intelligence. All right, and storyboards. We have a few storyboards here, like Arbor Day 2. You can uh, look at Josh Horowitz's original um, uh, storyboard that he created the... Um, the film from. Okay, so that's all for images. Miscellaneous. This is just some miscellaneous stuff. This is a landable uh, island that you can put in the game. This is the font to uh, more or less approximate the Stunt Island font for the boxes and stuff like that. Game maps. If you happen to still be playing Civnet, which I'm sure tons of people are, um, okay, probably not. This is a game map for Civnet, and here's one for Warcraft 2. Kind of old school, but hey, it's the, uh, it's the archive. It includes everything that we can find. Okay, MIDI. This is a music from the game in MIDI format, which is kind of cool. And sets. Uh, these are various sets that you have to run from within the game. Maybe I'll do a video on these at some point, and some user sound packs. Okay, so that's the miscellaneous. Moving on to the patch folder. This directory contains the patch that updates your game to the latest version, and it has readme files to show you how to do that. That way you can run it um, without the copy protection and without any of the sound issues that some of the earlier versions of the game had. All right, SI Tools. This contains the object editor, and there's lots of stuff here. So beginning in the docs folder, this has all kinds of documents showing about how to create objects and how to export them to the game. Game ready, if you just want to put some custom objects into the game, this shows how to do that uh, without messing around with any of the uh, objects yourself. And finally, the objects directory contains a whole bunch of custom objects, which I'll show you here in just a moment. These are a couple tools that you may be able to use to create objects other than the object designer. And finally, Sprite Maker contains some pretty interesting tools to modify Stunt Island sprites. And I'll just run a quick clip here. It shows how you can use it to do things like fire and explosions. I have my fire. Anyway, let's get to it. So you will need DOSBox for this. And let me see where I'm at here. I need to go to the archive directory and go to SI Tools and SD is the program that you want to run. And this is pretty cool because this, you can actually edit the entire island from here. And if you go into this um, stack editor, uh, let me make sure I capture the mouse here, okay. You can go into different portions of the island and you can see all these different hierarchies. This is, I believe, some forests and you zoom in far enough, eventually you see the trees. Anyway, um, I haven't, actually been able to experiment with modifying the island, but it is possible. But probably what you want to do for the most part is edit an object. And so if we just go here under objects, and let's start with the Spitfire, which is the, the prop that comes with the designer. And you use the right mouse button 
to move around both mouse buttons click and drag you can zoom in and out and we'll switch to the filled and actually we want to go to show sub which shows sub objects including the props and gear and i can hit the g button and that shows the gear going up and down okay the point line shows the all the points and the polygons that make up this object so um, yeah maybe in the future i'll show you how to actually use this but for the time being you can experiment around you can find some of dean newberry's um, Google props, so you know stuff like here's the Stanley Cup, and you can look and see how stuff like this is made. And there are a number of objects here. You can uh, go back. These are some of Larry's props, but um, you can look at. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, we have the Enterprise here. But if you go back to the objects and go to planes, you can open any of the original planes uh, up in here. So um, that's kind of cool to see how those are set up. And um, yeah, you can actually modify these if you wanted to and do stuff with them. Um, but anyway, that's just a quick overview of the object editor. And by the way, some of the most advanced props you could find might be in here. Let's see here. I think I can find the TIE Fighter. And yeah, it's a TIE Fighter and it uses sub objects. So it's um, pretty advanced, but yeah, a lot of the stuff is covered in the documentation, but just want to give a quick overview there. And actually let me go to this um, Sprite Maker and just show you. Um, let's see. There's one of these, you can do draw sprite. And let's see, let's do the dstar.spr. Yeah, and that's uh, just showing how you can use an image, ex import that in and eventually use it in the game. So, all right, um, that is the SI tools directory. And finally, we're about to the end of websites. These are just archived websites. So for example, if you want to look at an archive of a Falcon Stunt Island section, which is where the, um, the Labor Day trilogy is at, there's an archive there. And there are also archives of, for example, Stunt Island Central from clear back in the day and modern and same with Stunt Island Harbor. Oh, and also the Stunt Island movie database you can view as of 1998 or so, all of the films and what the ratings were at that time. So, all right, that is a quick look at the archive. I'm pretty excited to release this and show you all of the films and files that are here. And I'm always looking for more, so especially films, but any other images or whatever documents that you have, please send those to me and I will include them in the next version of the archive. This archive exists because Stunt Island is such an amazing and creative program. Right out of the box, you could make a movie and share it with your friends, even if they didn't have the game. You could add custom sounds and music as well. When we acquired the object editor, that opened up a whole new creative avenue. Neil Halilamian had the idea of an archive back in 2004, and ironically you can find the email where he first starts the archive right here in the archive. Neil collected a whole bunch of important films in the beginning, and his archive was online for many years. I had the idea to update and organize the archive in 2021, and it took me a couple of years to get everything together. Lots of people contributed to the new archive, and I'll try to list a few of their names here.